Fielder. This is Fern Halls. And you are listening to Aetherite Radio. Aetherite Radio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Aetherite Radio Final Fa- uh, Gamerscape's Final Fantasy XIV podcast. We were talking like right through that intro, man, just right up to the last second. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I just get excited about video games. There's I'm a lot so of sorry. things to I'll be excited. There's a lot of stuff no. coming up, man. It's um, good. <laughs> uh, I'm Ujex. Uh, with me, we've got all you know, and Rook Zen is feeling a little under the weather today, so get better, please. Hope you feel better soon. Uh, better. Joining us today, though, we do have... The one and only Brian Ricardo. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, uh, hello everyone. <laughs> Excited to be here. <laughs> it's my second time now. <laughs> yeah. Yay! We're so happy to have you back. Um, also, Fusion, though, you are going to have to say Brian's name again, but I'm going to need you oh. to roll the R's more. Oh, mm. Brian Ricardo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy when people roll the R and Brian as well. <laughs> Very Look, good. she said R's. I mean, I guess there, there are two in the. I mean, yeah. You want the R's? Yeah. We do all the R's. I mean, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not short. You're here. You're gonna get every single R. Exactly. Every right. single R. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we do have a little bit of news to run through first. Um, then after that, we're going to talk a little bit about the Crystal Conflict Regional Championship. Uh, it's going to be going yep. on three weeks. We're three weeks out. Las yeah. Vegas oh Fan gosh. Fest is happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't say that. Don't say that. You're going to freak Brian out. Deep West. Deep <laughs> Um, so yeah, news. Uh, the Final Fantasy XIV, uh, 10, 10th anniversary site is up. That's the thing that they did. Um, right. with this really nice, uh, piece of artwork from uh, Ushitaka Amano. It's not Heidelin, though. I know. It's is a it, mystery Is it here. like generic Yoshitaka Amano goddess? Is mm-hmm. it... I don't know, man. Like, for, for some reason, and it's one of those things that's hard to describe, I was getting kind of Eleven vibes off of it. Sure. Which sent yeah. me down this whole yeah. terrible rabbit hole of like, okay, <laughs> so like Eleven, um, and they're kind of wrapping up their dev. They're, they're really going on like... <laughs> <laughs> they, like like the the they, they had a dev shuffle they're like really like bare bones now yeah. um if you look at the the time of day that the expansions represented endwalker was a new dawn altana in 11 was the dawn goddess uh and it's like Tim man Boyle. i need to like <laughs> i need to, i need to stop myself because like if i'm sitting there in three weeks and it's not like Return to Vanadil, like Yoshida trolled me oh with in one of our gosh. interviews. Oh. <laughs> he, it was like yeah. literally, I'm like, "Yo, Yoshida, like, what's 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 after the Asian arc?" He's like, "Yeah, I mean, there's the Asians and Zodiac and stuff. After that, I'm sure there's other stuff we can tell. I don't know. Return to Vanadil." <laughs> That would be so hype. I would be so excited for that. Like, I, yeah. I, this this website went up that morning. I was like, all right, I'm like busting out the murder board. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, there's little Get swirls in this artwork. Are there eleven of these little swirls? Like, I'm trying oh to find God. like every like. I got sucked in hard. Um, it is really pretty though, and I think yeah. like your kind of interpretation of it as being something symbolic of the new dawn doesn't feel off at all. Right. Like whether it is meant to be something like an eleven reference or if it's mm-hmm. just meant to be more of a metaphorical embodiment of you know whatever they were no kind of it's doing. not it's not asura because asura would have multiple heads plus we already she do have, have that multiple, preview artwork yeah. and it's it's not that we know it's not heidelin because heidelin has head wings this doesn't have head wings yeah. this has so. like a she has like a discus behind her head and there's this yeah. very sun mm-hmm. kind of look to it mm-hmm. the fire against the dark night sky um, no idea. I mean, um, yeah, it's possible it could just be an interpretation of it, something. It it's may also it be not be to relevant Asura. to anything oh, yeah. that they're working on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're like, who knows? They're like, hey, Amano, can you just like draw us a cool thing for 14? And he's like, uh, yeah, this looks, yeah, this is my work. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. It's beautiful, yeah, yeah. though, and I am yeah. curious to see if it's meant to be an allusion to something. Who knows? Mm-hmm. We'll find out in three weeks. Um, yeah. With the the tenth anniversary website, we did get uh, a couple little things. So like we know that the rising is coming. Uh, there's mm-hmm. gonna be tenth anniversary frames and circuits for G posts. There's gonna be another fourteen hour broadcast. We don't have the the you know little details on that. Uh, we also know Moogle Treasure Trove August twenty seventh. Mm. So we have a date for that, which means that we'll <laughs> probably see six point five. Uh, no September. 
Are you, I was like, the suspense no, is I'm killing like, me. I'm like looking at, I'm like, wait, hold on. Math, numbers, dates. Yeah, no, that's right. End of September. Yeah. Which mm. is crazy. Wait, wait. 6.5? What, wait, wait, what is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah 6.5, right? We, don't... we still have 6.45, but we're yes. theorizing that's coming out oh, okay. before FanFest, right? Yeah. I, my assumption would be that that comes out yeah. in the weeks before FanFest. Yeah, Not like totally two weeks sure. from now. I, yeah. I don't know. We didn't have a live letter yet, though. No, we, we didn't. Have it. We might have one at FanFest. <laughs> and then maybe they'll they'll put it out that there's next always week. a live letter at fan fest so my yeah. guess is is they'll it'll be like right before or right after um mm. and that's what that that live letter will be based around yeah. um but yeah mm. end of september it, just, it feels weird i'm like didn't, didn't the last <laughs> patch just come out like last week is that really i'm like i know <laughs> looking at the calendar i'm like carry the one is that, is that right yeah uh -huh. end of september yeah. which is wild because i mean we still have months of other fan fests and it's like we probably won't get an expansion to like i would be surprised if it was summer that would put them yeah. back on their kind of oh, original track but like mm. waiting longer than that would be rough <laughs> i yeah. know i think that's where we're all at right now where right where there's that mm -hmm. sort of pseudo apprehension where like the pandemic did change things and then they also extended their dev time but everybody's wondering are they going to get back on the original release schedule somehow with expansions? Or are we going right. to be looking at even longer gaps between expansions now? And I think a lot of us are kind of like, I love this game. I will obviously play it whenever it comes out. Mm -hmm. But, oh mm -hmm. boy, would I love an expansion next summer, I, please. I would, mm -hmm. I would really love if we could get out of the the 6.5 part 2 part <laughs> of the patch cycle. Because it just Quicker. drags. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, you I know, mean, they got a lot with, of they got a lot of stuff to do. So with I, as know. little as we know about where we're going, I guess they could I take yeah. until part two, six point five to tell us. Don't please God. don't. But you could. <laughs> don't. Yeah. Even. Anyway, we'll um, yeah. <laughs> the Endwalker uh, EP four is now available. Uh, it's got six tracks. One amongst the weary fleeting moment. Athena, the tireless one. Ultima's perfection from Endwalker. Star's breath and mm -hmm. Voidcast Savior. So if you want more music. There you go. Um, hmm. Also, uh, we've been talking about this a little bit. We're like, they've had round one of FanFest pre-orders. When's round two? <laughs> uh, that said, if you did order round one, they have started attempting charges. So make sure you're checking your emails to make sure that that all went through. Um, and they're like, so we're like, is round two going to have like other stuff? Is it just going to be more of the same stuff and it ships out later? Uh, is there going to be a lore book in round two? No. The lore book is already out. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it yeah, won't be out for the fan fest, but uh, Encyclopedia Eorzea Volume Three. Uh, you can pre-order it right now. Um, we actually have. I made an affiliate link because you can get it on the Amazon, so you can check that out there mm -hmm. in the chat. Uh, we do get a uh, portion of the uh, sales for that, so if you want to help support us, you can go mm -hmm. ahead and pick it up there. Um, it'll probably also be a little cheaper shipping. So Square Enix did update their store. Yep, Chip shipping is a little better. Uh, but they also don't let you cancel anything and they charge you for pre-orders immediately. So <laughs> it's always so something. Heads up. It's always I've something. Also, I've also heard a lot of people having a lot of difficulties getting changes put through for yes. pre-order so, for FanFest. Yeah, the, the issue so, there, yeah. I was I was freaking out about it because I had issues with my 16 pre-order. The card that I had used several times before on their website was declined. So I'm like, all right. Um, and they've <laughs> they've changed their back end. So it's like, okay, yeah. you can't modify orders on their current, their new system. Um, luckily, they have like a legacy site where it's basically they like, <laughs> they have a hamster wheel powering the old store yeah. order website. <laughs> um, wow. And you can go on. So you can reorder that it. way. Yeah, it's, I'm glad they have that because like I yeah. was in the days leading up to this, I was like, this is going to be like a shit show. It's going to be awful. Um, yeah, but hopefully start, everybody can get that stuff sorted out and get your orders. So, yeah, start talking to customer service as soon as possible. Yes, because I know a lot of people like if you've changed addresses, if there mm. seems to be an issue with the payment, those kinds of things. Um, because I know a lot of people who have been going like weeks without feedback. So like like yep. without a response from them. So like start responding now if you are concerned that it's not going to show up. Yep. But all of this to say, 
I'm so excited about Encyclopedia Eorzea yeah. Volume 3. Mm-hmm. So it's, and it has so much good stuff in it from the little yeah. previews we've already seen. And I, like, I immediately smashed that pre-order so button. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you can help me here. Because, like, a lot of people were freaking out about the fact that one of the preview pages had uh, Reen's last name as Waters, which is Thancred's last name. And they were like, oh, my God, she picked us. Didn't we know that? <laughs> I feel like either either that's not a huge jump to think mm. that, or we actually knew that before. Uh, I I don't recall it being yeah, recall explicitly it. Okay. canonized. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Brian know. Okay. And I, don't, okay. I don't I don't remember it being explicitly canonized. I think the implication that yeah. she is taking up his legacy is there because Maybe that's she what it is then. inherits okay. his mm, weapon fair. and she you know those sorts of things. But I think this was the first time that we have actually seen that specifically, which mm. is also really interesting and lovely, too, because Thancred's um, uh, surname, if you will, is actually because he is a, he's parentless. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. like for for parentless children or, you know, bastards uh, like mm-hmm. that are born outside of wedlock, um, kind of like for those of you who are familiar with Game of Thrones, but it comes yeah, from yeah, I wonder where they got real- that. <laughs> it comes well. It comes from real world stuff, yeah. as far as I know, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they would take a name that, like, a, a last name, a, a family name that, like, mm-hmm. is something generic about where they are from or where they were, you know, found. Or so Waters is just like a reference to the fact that um, uh, Thancred grew up on like the docks of Limsa, I think, right? Yeah. And yeah, that and he, he tried to, he tried to pickpocket Louis Saw once, and that's yes, and look yeah. at him now. <laughs> so it's really <laughs> sweet, actually, because like. She's taken a name that would have been indicated as something shameful for him and instead made it a symbol of their family, which I think is really sweet. That's deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or she has no idea. <laughs> She's like, no, that's just his last name. It's, oh. Whatever. I don't know. I just took it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, volume three of the Encyclopedia Eorzea um, is going to cover Shadowbringers and Endwalker content. 304 pages. Uh, you'll get a code for a wind-up Fortuno minion with it. Uh, if you live in Japan, hey, you get bonuses with your book. We don't, because N.A. <laughs> uh, JP Store will give you a set of three clear bookmarks, uh, one with the crystal, which is on the cover, uh, and then with Heidel- one with Heidelin and one with Zodiac. Um, so there you go. It's out mm-hmm. in... Uh, <laughs> I have all this information in the outline. I forgot to put the damn date. It's like November, <laughs> late November, December yeah. 19th, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. So it's coming soon, but it will miss FanFest, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but that's I not- do love the comments in chat where Nilsh brings up that people were also um, really excited because Ardbert got a canonical last name as well yes. in the mm, book. Yep. So. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not 19th. salty. That's what it I'm is. not December salty 19th. that it's not called Encyclopedia Norvron, but I I would like it. <laughs> but That'd it covers cool. Endwalker. They're not gonna, I know. They're not going to split production into two books. I know. I just want the history of Norvan more. Maybe we'll get it more in this one, you know. Mm-hmm. But Hopefully. I was like, there's there's a small chance they might. No, they're never going to name it that because there's three volumes of it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, we also got a uh, new uh, costume up on the uh, online stores. The mm. Sig... Sig... Senior? Senior. Senior. Oh, is that what it is? I mm-hmm. see, I, what are words? I don't even. Yeah, so there's a tire. <laughs> uh, shockingly, surprisingly, no one, Viera and Hrothgar, can't wear the hat on it. So oh, no. <laughs> if you're one of those races, enjoy paying for f- full price for that. Um, and yep. the Make It Rain campaign. Yeah, I, we could spend all day just like, hats. I'm going to just, I'm just going to go. Yep. We'll be here all day. <laughs> Fix your shit, Square. Yeah. Uh, Make It Rain campaign is going on right now. Uh, ends July 17th, so you still got a little bit of time to uh, jump in on that. If you haven't already, make sure you're doing your uh, your costume stuff, getting all those uh, extra MGPs. Um, and that's it. That's news. We did it. Yay. Yay. Also, three weeks till FanFest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you haven't listened to <laughs> our episode about FanFest prep and what you need to know, if it's your first one, or even if you're just curious about how to optimize your FanFest travel game, uh, check out that episode that we did a few weeks ago. That sounds like we like min max the hell out of a trip to Vegas, really. <laughs> kind of. Fully optimize your fan fest trip. <laughs> yeah, don't and for those any of more a... than like over a hundred, like a hundred skill speed, that's too much. You don't want to. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you, tone it down you gotta a be below the break point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for anybody wondering, yeah, the average right now temperature in Vegas oh. is around one hundred and six Fahrenheit. Yeah. I think. I think yeah, the high. The high, high this this week was yep. like one sixteen. Yep. But it's okay because it. it's a dry heat. <laughs> Yeah, that's 41 Celsius to anybody who needs <laughs> no, Celsius. You, it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag hydrate for Heidelin, everybody. 
Get yourself a water bottle. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, all right. So that's going to take us into our discussion here. We've got Brian here. I'm sorry. We've got Brian here. Uh, I'm Brian so... and Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, Brian, uh, tell us tell yeah. us who you are. Tell us what you do. Uh, let everybody sure. know. So I'm, my name is Brian Ricardo. Um, I'm a content creator who focuses on Final Fantasy XIV's PvP. But I do variety. I do like a lot of competitive games and game modes. I just started a Guild Wars 2 PvP really recently. <laughs> Super into that. So happy. <laughs> but yeah, I've been brought in the community for like six years. I do um, coaching for PvP. I do commentary for tournaments. I do community events. Lots of stuff. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so you got a big thing coming up. Yes. I don't know. I'm, 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 hopefully people, people tune in. Yes. No, no, Brian. Brian is going to be one of the casters for yeah. the PvP tournament at FanFest in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did um, the preliminaries. And we also, they also did um, a community cup tournament before this tournament. And I also did a commentary for that for... NA and EU actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so. What, what, what was it like getting that call where it's like, hey, you like want to do this thing in Vegas for us? Oh my God. So uh, <laughs> let me just go back a little bit. I've been doing commentary for like community run tournaments since the feast days. That's the the first arena this game mm-hmm. had, Final Fantasy XIV had. So I've been doing commentary for like since like 2018, basically. Um, so being able to do this for CC now is such a big deal to me. Like, Super excited and ready to show my skills and passion. <laughs> <laughs> it's so well deserved and it's so exciting. It was so incredibly ecstatic for you when it was announced and yeah. you got to do your reveal video and you got to share your like words about being a part of it. It was yeah. so wonderful to see. And I can't wait to see you on that stage. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um I've been on stage before for as a competitor for the last fan fest so this time it's doing the commentary and you know i'm trying i'm trying to like keep that in mind i've been on stage before <laughs> even though it's like totally <laughs> different i'm trying to keep that in mind like okay i've been on stage mm. before i can't do this <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's fine just if it helps us just, just think of everybody watching from home on their computer naked <laughs> oh my gosh that helps me <laughs> <laughs> You know, if, you know, it, if, it, hey, if it helps, why not, right? Yeah, just imagine yeah, everyone okay. in the quicksands naked. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aren't they always, though? Yeah. <laughs> it's not really different, though. I don't know. Okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, Frosty uh, will also be coasti- uh, coasting. I, yeah. I read co-casting and it turned into coasting. <laughs> Good job, Brain. Uh, co-casting as well. Uh, we were going to have them on too, but they, they had some other stuff they needed to take care of, unfortunately. But that's okay, because we got Brian Ricardo. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was talking to him earlier today, actually. I was asking him, because we haven't decided exactly what we're wearing yet. And I was asking him, uh... hey, what are, you, what are you thinking about wearing? And he tells me a bikini. So, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> that's still not said on what we were going to wear. Um, hmm. we're, I think we're likely to go like business casual. Like I'm going to mm. wear a nice shirt, a tie. I'll wear some jewelry, probably, to spice hey. it up. Yeah. yeah. Like Yoshi P, right? Yeah. 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 It's like Just 17, get a ton 17 of rings. different rings. Yeah. I know there's only 10 <laughs> fingers, but it's I fine. I love his rings. Yeah, his <laughs> rings are awesome. Yeah. Um, so so walk us through this, Brian. If, if, if nobody has really paid a lot of attention to PvP before, what is the Crystalline Conflict Regional Championship? So, um, basically, there was an entry... It was like public for everyone. Anyone could have entered this tournament. Um, it was on the Lodestone and on the social media. You just apply as a team. It has to be pre-made. You have, to have five, or up to seven people, but five minimum. And, you know, you could do it with whoever you want. Ranking doesn't matter. There was no, like, for feasts. We had um, to play in, like, the ranking leaderboard. And the top teams were to play in the tournament. But this one was just, like, anyone can apply, any skill levels. And then SE chose... Um, they went through that and like see who's like avail- available and who's like um, like they went through accounts too to see like who's like <laughs> who's like following terms of service and things like that. Mm-hmm. And who will be good at representation to play in the tournament and and that's how they chose the teams and those teams had to play in preliminaries and now for FanFest we'll be seeing the finals. 
That's cool. Yeah, and that's... and the, the people in the finals, they got they got tickets to FanFest, which yeah. this time around, that's that surprise in and of itself, I think, for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and the biggest thing is a big, big, big reward. $22,000 for the winning team. Yeah, I, that's so wild to me because as I was like looking through things from previous years, is this the first time that they've offered a cash reward for for like the tournament with like FanFest? So for fees, um, the main reward was like the laptops. I think the sponsor was like Logitech. I think it was Logitech for NA and then like Alienware for EU. Um, that was like the main reward, but we, you know, we kind of mm -hmm. did get money <laughs> because for like tax reasons and stuff like that. So, but I yeah, gotcha. it wasn't a cash reward. The reward was like the laptop and a physical trophy. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Yeah, it seemed like in previous years when I'd been looking through, like every every year they seem to give out a title in game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you get the title, you get the like the actual trophy. In the past, I'd seen that they'd done like three years of subscription to the yeah. game or something, which is like kind yeah. of a cash equivalent. But it's really interesting to see them this year putting up like yeah. a cash prize pool for this that the team then gets to split in addition to the trophy in-game achievement and in-game title um, that those teams will also be receiving. But I, I actually I don't know how everybody else felt about it, but I actually was excited seeing this because it felt like they want to invest more in that kind of competitive or sort of esports aspect of the community in a way that... I like not that they haven't in the past. I think there's always been interest mm -hmm. for it, but this seemed like a really big kind of like mm -hmm. confidence we are mm -hmm. backing this, you know, revamp for PvP and right. these kinds of championships. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think um a big part of it is because of how much the JP community loves Crystal Conflict. Mm -hmm. They they literally do like tournaments like every week and like Yoshi P shows up himself and like plays <laughs> sometimes. What? Yeah. Wow. yeah, and like he like watches streams, <laughs> the JP streams. Like he's super into CC. He loves it, and mm -hmm. the community over there loves it. We not that NA doesn't love you, <laughs> sure, but like they have a really strong, passionate for the light party part of Crystal Conflict, the team play, the pre mates. Even mm -hmm. though we don't have it in the game where we can play light party, they do like custom matches and bring people together that way. That's cool. I yeah. Didn't know that. Super yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah, so we have obviously right now um, the North American one that's running, yes. which will pair up with FanFest like we were talking about here in a couple weeks. Um, and then they did, with this 10-year anniversary website, at least generally announce that, th yes, there will be EU and JP championships coming as well, which mm -hmm. I think everybody was kind of assuming, yeah. considering the fact that, um, you know, it was a regional championship and it was yeah. exclusive to NA. The idea that they would do them for the other major regions the game covers makes a lot of sense. But it's nice to see that that has been, like, formally announced, likely, like, pairing up with those fan fests as well. Um, and then you've been, I mean, like you were saying, you've been working through a lot of this, Brian, because you had prelims early-ish mid-June. You just got through quarterfinals, right? 17th and 18th. And then we have these coming up for FanFest. So June was a super busy month for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, only the preliminaries, I'm sorry, the quarterfinals were streamed. The preliminaries, people just played with SE staff, um, like obviously watching mm -hmm. it and so. stuff. Um, but I did, I did sneak peek though. I was like there. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask like, did you watch? That? Oh, yeah, did I did watch. Me and Frosty was there. We're like getting like tips on like how they. We were practicing commentary, and we were also mm -hmm. like looking at how teams are doing, so we can have a general idea like what they played coming up and things like that. Because they're allowed to switch comps, they're allowed to switch jobs, so we just wanted to have some knowledge of their background and what they're doing and their progress. Okay. Can they switch jobs between every round? Or is yes. it like, okay, nice. Yeah, but players, oh, the player situation, I believe um, they would have to like play with their comp, like the teams, the players, um, with who they choose on stage. But after they like win or lose a set, they can switch members, so. Gotcha. Yeah. Because they don't want people like shuffling on stage. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring it in your, your extra mm -hmm. players. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Your pinch hitters, you know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just imagine it's some someone just running out on the stage, tag out, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, you know that team has a perfect, you know, Dark Knight. So we need the person who is the, you know, the counter. You don't want that. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Because mm -hmm. you're thinking about why you might bring, like, having minimum five players makes sense, right? You have five players, yeah. like, you go in for your match, um, and, and you're going to be playing with that. But um, the idea of having, like, alternatives. Yeah. Just from the perspective of, well, what if somebody is sick the week of, yes. or what if somebody can't? I mean, yes, obviously you have somebody step in, but you're right in that I feel like there is even additional strategy to that, where if you have somebody who is like a really great player on X map or something, or mm -hmm. um, if you get lined up against another team, like you were saying, Alito, where it's like, I know we can combat such and such player who's really good at Paladin if we bring mm -hmm. in this player. Um, there, There is definitely a so lot many. more strategy that goes yeah. into it. Yeah, there's also like just counter picking. Like they have a gun breaker. Maybe I don't want to run this job. Mm -hmm. Lots to think about. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's good for just in general in PvP is to like know a lot of jobs for, for yourself. Yeah, yeah. There's a strength in being like an incredible main at something, but being able to flex to adjust to the situation. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how quickly that can turn the tides of a set that like you're going, exactly. this really is not working for us. We mm -hmm. have to do something different. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's always nice to have another job in your back pocket. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A good example is um for, fan for um, 2018. Um, my team, we had a comp where... Sir was on my team. Sir, Sir, he's a really strong like paladin player. <laughs> he's so good. He's yeah. so good at paladin. I yeah. love watching Sir play paladin. Yeah, but after like the like the meta was like building, like how light party teams are playing, we knew paladin was not gonna work. It's just not good enough in the meta and the balance. So he had to unfortunately switch to warrior. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though he did not want to, it was not in his heart, but like for the team, like he had to like learn to play warrior mm -hmm. so we can like have a shot at, you know, actually winning on stage. <laughs> right. See, how did, how you... did you end up doing with, with that tournament? Oh, I was second place. Second place. Okay. Yeah. But it was so close. <laughs> so we close. were, we were actually, um, we were two, one on the team. We were like one set away from winning the tournament. But then they won the two after that. So uh, it ended up being two, three, and they won. Uh, hey, you still made it all the way there, which is amazing. Yeah. But when you're like, when you're like this close to taking the whole thing, it has to just be that like, oh, why? Yeah, it definitely <laughs> salts in the moment, but like I did get, I did get over it, and you know, I kind of leveraged myself in the community, and I think it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> So when Seems you were good. at the 2018, that was 2018, Fan yes. Fest, yeah? that was still Feast, right? Yeah, that was the Feast tournament. How did you find that that competition has been different even from like Crystalline Conflict and how they're mm -hmm. running it now? Is it is it significantly different in like the format or the setup or um, kind of like what you think, I don't know, even the, the play is like? I mean, obviously they're very uh, different game modes, but yeah. what do you think sort of contrasts sure. those the most? Yeah, I can start with plays. Um, so Feast is very much, it's, it's definitely slower. Like, you have to be super tight with your burst. So, like, there's a lot of time where you're just, like, doing little combos, not really doing major damage, trying to figure out who you're going to target. And then when you have that target, you go, like, boom, 5, 4, mm -hmm. 2, 1, kill someone. Um, Crystal Conflict is, like, that almost the entire time <laughs> because, like, it's just five players. That brings another, like, big damage into the mix and then... The limit breaks are always on. It's just always big damage available in, in Crystal Conflict. Um, people see it as more chaotic, but um, definitely when you get to a certain level, you'll see that there's a rhythm to it. It's not that chaotic. Um, in terms of the tournament, you know, Fe the Feast tournament was like their first, like, <laughs> like mm -hmm. step into like the esports or like that type of thing. So there was a lot of like learning from that. And I think. A decent amount of learning did go into this, so like, this, this feels a bit more organized in some ways, I will say for sure. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see it, um, and it, it will be interesting for you coming in, having competed last year, but now being on the other side of the desk. I mean, yeah. do you feel like it's going to be a hugely different experience? What was it like for you when you were competing versus commentating now? Yeah, so I actually, when I was a competitor um i didn't have nerves for some reason i mm. you know tiny nerves but as soon as i got on stage i was like into it like focused on the game trying to win i'm hoping that's gonna be the case for this <laughs> or like <laughs> a 
a little nervous, but as soon as I start commentating and then I'm like, and we're in the vibe, because it's not just me, you know, Frosty's mm-hmm. going to be there and then um, the Square Enix staff will be like the, kind of like the main host, like pushing her around, so that's worth it too. But yeah. So I'm su- hoping that will make me comfortable and I'll just like be in the mode and like, so I hope it'll feel like the same in that way. Like, <laughs> sorry, I just feel like, just do the thing. Get in the zone. <laughs> Get yeah. in the zone, yeah. Yeah. I was curious, um, Fusion, Aldino, have you attended the uh, PvP, like, championships of the tournaments in the past at FanFest? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think uh, last time around, I think it was, like, the like the first thing in the morning the, for the second day was the, the PvP tournament. I think so. Um, but yeah, it was yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I remember being it early. It's it's a really yeah. cool energy for 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 the room just to be in there. Everybody's yeah. you know, cheering for their favorites, and it's 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 a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really interesting because of the way that they set it up previously, and probably is going to be the same way where the stage is in the venue that everybody else is in. So you just get that vibe, even if you're not watching it. So if something happened and people start screaming, everybody who's even doing like the the little carnival games are like, "What? What happened? Really <laughs> oh, that's cool." <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember in 2018, like, it, so, since it was so early, like, the seats were not super full in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But, like, as soon as, like, the yelling happened and we got to, like, grand yep. finals, like, every seat was, like, full. People were still waking <laughs> yeah. up. They were, they were, they were still recovering from their first full night in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were not ready to scream yet. <laughs> um, so, so with Crystal Conflict now, um, how many how many players like were were involved with this? I mean, we have the 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 preliminaries, the the quarterfinals and stuff. Um, how many like teams ended up kind of getting I into think, this? I think they accepted thirty teams. I may have to relook at that, but I believe they accepted thirty teams, and then they fought in the preliminaries and end up to like um, what was that like a top ten or something. I don't remember exact numbers, but it was a lot of teams that got to register and play for the preliminaries. I see. Were there was, more? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You were going to ask like literally the same thing. I mean, I was I, we, we were, we're both looking at the same outline. <laughs> um, were there more than the, that amount of teams that applied or was... Oh, that had to have been. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, I know that a lot of people with no PvP experience like tried to get in. So I had to. Because some people who did get into the preliminaries were, like, unexperienced, like, barely played before or, like, unranked, only did casual. So, mm-hmm. for sure, there had to have been more people like that who didn't get in, but they applied. Yeah. Yeah. Do I'd you... love to see that, though. Because yeah. I feel like, I mean, there's even been talk about this with the cosplay contest and stuff, right? Um, with easing some of the restrictions and, like, allowing everybody to come in this year for FanFest. We were talking about this in our cosplay episode um, a couple months ago. That there was discussion in the community about, like, well, what about the professional cosplayers? Like, if people are allowed to enter now and they... You don't have to make all their outfit or if there's no like massive prize although obviously it's a different situation with pvp because there is this big prize pool um you know does that diminish things or does that make it not worth it for like professional players to be involved but honestly i think one of the biggest things especially for pvp and the community and it flourishing and thriving is getting more people interested and engaged with it getting yes like do you agree with that you feel like that yeah yeah. yeah, we we need to have more people joining because the community is small. So like having people intrigued and participating right. or just like spectating is like a super big thing that needs to happen. And I, I just opened up the website. It was thirty two teams that were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> it was like yeah, it was like thirty. It was like really close to thirty. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder what gave them, I'm sure actually, now that I say it out loud, probably that number came from them looking at the actual brackets they were going to run and how long and estimating all of that, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, it's interesting because at least generally, they outlined on the website, right, that there were a lot of specific rules, right? Your account has to be in good standing, all these kinds of things. If we have more than 32 teams that applied, like you were saying, you're pretty sure many more did, yes, Um, especially Mm -hmm. because those FanFest tickets full flight and lodgings and like everything else. I mean, that's amazing, let alone the actual prize pool, which is fantastic to see. 
Um, like they would look at, you know, even if you had done previous ranked stuff or not, but that yes. wasn't fully the deciding factor. Um, and that they would, you know, make sure your account was in good standing. Um, they mm -hmm. also had like a variety of different rules and things like that. Um, so, I mean, if anybody is curious about this for future ones, you can find those even still on the website, um, what they kind of outlined for that and what the application process looked like, um, even though obviously it's closed now for NA, but for any listeners that are EU or are going to JP or, or you know, whatever it might be there, um, I mean, they will theoretically open those up and probably do something similar, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean... Do you feel like the teams that came through were a good mix? Like the ones that they ultimately selected were a good mix? Do you think like there were improvements to that system or like other ways you'd like to see more people involved? Or do you, do you feel like it was pretty manageable or pretty good, Brian? Well, from talking to the community, like just people in general who play PvP a ton, it seems like a lot of teams didn't get in. Um, like really good players who like have the top 100 to... You know, because in this, they said in the thing, um, if you have like top 100, they'll look at that and put that part of the process. But mm. there are people who were top 100 that didn't make in, and they don't know why, you know, SE didn't go email every single team, like, this is why you did not get in. So they don't know why. And that was like a part of the community that felt like a little hurt and bad about it. Um, obviously, I don't know either why they didn't get in. So it could be reasons. It could be like their account wasn't like they had too much strikes or something. Mm. But mm. that did suck. Um, but in general, the teams I got in, yeah, it was a, I felt like there was a good balance between um, people who are less experienced and then like the veteran teams that did get in. Um, you know, we, we got, um, obviously because of that, the, the, this balance, there was some stomps in preliminaries mm. and uh, leading up to quarterfinals. But at the end, like this finals, it's going to be like all good teams on stage. So mm. I think the end goal is there, right? Mm. To yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like some of those new player groups actually did really well too. Oh yeah, right? there were there were some underdog teams that got like pretty far, <laughs> which awesome. is always great to see. Yeah. Um, another another thing was like um, when the SE staff during the tournament they asked me who was a person they should be looking out for, and I named a person who was like super new to PvP <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that I seen play in previous tournaments. Her name is Shannon. Um, I seen her rise from being a new player to like participating in this tournament. And I said to her like, I've seen this progress and then she's going to be one of the teams who are <laughs> playing at the stage. So mm. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you put your heart into it and practice, even if you're a new player, you could like make it as a finalist with your team for that sure. That is so cool. I love that. Um, that's awesome to hear, honestly, because I mean, yeah, I think a lot of times people psych themselves out before they even try something yeah. like this or the apprehension about ranked, um, especially right. in a community that has a wide range of focus from casual to hardcore. I think a lot of times people really worry about engaging with it or, you know, feeling as though it has to be a reflection of like a direct reflection of self-worth mm -hmm. or, or things like that, like a level of pressure that they shy away from. But it's really cool to see what happens. I think if you do engage with it and if you give it your best shot and if you, even if you suffer a lot of losses or even if you feel like, you know, the climb is difficult, you can still make progress. You could still end up on something like the FanFest stage. You could yeah. even just yeah. get a bunch of cool stuff that you enjoy in game or, you know, meet the greater community. So I think like shifting some of the apprehension about modes like that to be something more like a celebration or yes. you know something that's exciting is definitely um something that we can all kind of work on if, if you've mm -hmm. you know ever been really worried about it because yeah it just takes starting mm -hmm. and being yeah. willing to keep going you know yeah. and a lot of communities like always willing to support like the revival discord and like mm -hmm. people, there's like content creators like me who do like coaching for free so <laughs> yeah people are willing to help new players all the time Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the last thing we had were the semifinals, right? Or the 
quarterfinal. What are the fuck? I I am quarter awful finals. with with yeah, TVP yeah. brackets. But I I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I put semifinals down first on the outline because this was like a recap of the full competition thus far. Mm. So we started with the semifinals, and then the quarterfinals were the most recent. Yeah. Oh, you listed them chronologically. What a yes, wow. in order of time occurrence. Yes, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So so how how were the semifinals conducted? Um what was like the the process with with going through and having those teams go up against each other? Oh, yeah, like I said earlier, it was some unbalance, but I think the show was decent towards the end. Um I I had fun seeing like who was going to make it. That I that was like my biggest adrenaline cuz I as a per person who like previously competed, like I I felt like I was in their shoes. So, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was also rooting for underdogs just because that's always like fun. Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah. The, for the semifinals, did they like organize them in game kind of thing where like they were like custom matches yeah. on NA and people would kind oh, of yeah. like, show up and I gotcha. So it was yeah. just something where they, I mean, it was pretty straightforward to how you would just do this normally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there was like a, as he's running it through Discord, and we go into this. The location was Dynamis for NA. We were always on Dynamis mm. for whatever day was scheduled, and everyone would come. Even the people who didn't compete would come. And I was trying to tell like people, people, people in the community, just in general, just come hang, vibe. Even though they don't see because they can't spectate unless they're watching right. the stream. Just get the vibe going. <laughs> uh, yeah, the custom party final will be up, and then set up the teams that way. And yeah, they competed. Um, um, I was in the game. My character was like in the, the spectator section with Frosty, and we would see it that way. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. I noticed that even in the semifinals, and this is something um, I mean, we don't have to go into like huge detail if you don't want to, but it is something that I'm sure people will talk about. And I know even when the quarterfinals were broadcast, it came yeah. up in chat. Um, but teams that were uh, disqualified. For various yeah, reasons. Right. And I know that in the semifinals, even right before oh, we yeah, had the yeah. live streams, there were some disqualifications. Mm -hmm. And I guess I just wanted to sort of ask um, with that, like, do you have any thoughts for participants to make sure that they're not disqualified? Is there <sighs> yeah, is there anything yeah. around that that you would just like want to speak to the community about in regards uh, yeah. to that? <laughs> yeah. So just for more context to that, um, during the tournament, yeah, before the tournament, people got were unable to participate because their account standing, but also during the tournament, as it was like progressing, some teams did get disqualified, um, mostly for like third party tools. Um, mm. It's like on the website, it's not like secret information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because some of them decided to stream their POV and then like some of the competitors or whoever reported that to Square Enix and they saw, hey, they're using this third party tool on the stream as against the rules, as against the in-game rules. So they got disqualified. Um, which I obviously that's reasonable to me because mm -hmm. that's the rules. Don't follow all the rules, and I would just say to that, um, yeah, just like be super mindful of TOS when it comes to stuff like this. Um, obviously, they would want they don't want to like eliminate good teams. <laughs> no, we want to see the good teams play and have as much hype as possible and have as much matches as possible too because we did lose out some matches because that. Um, right. but yeah, people just gotta be super careful and remember that this game has a lot of rules, especially when it comes to third party tools. Um, even though you might see like, oh, just this little character mod is not a big deal, but SC will see that as like, you know, you're breaking the rules here. Mm. Yeah. Mod is yeah. a mod. And I mean, and those, those computers in Vegas for the finals aren't going to have those mods on it. So like, yeah. Yeah. Why why play in the tournament with them? You're not uh -huh. you're not, if, if if there is anything giving an advantage, you're not gonna have that. So yeah. why yeah. why go through the brands yeah. with it? Yeah, some some people are just using like straight up like things that would help them. Yeah. Mm. So, and streaming it, which is just beyond yeah. <laughs> I know. It never like... makes sense to me. It just never makes sense. <laughs> the people that stream with the mods, a billion times. It's like why why would you decide That's to uh, it like, never yeah, no, I was just saying it never matters until it matters. And just because, like, just because a hundred times before you might be like, well, normally I just pop up my stream and no one cares and I've got, you know, like five viewers and Square Enix doesn't, doesn't bother me 
normally about this or i see people post screenshots using third-party tools or i see all this stuff and it doesn't like it doesn't they all get to do it or like it's not a problem but the moment that for any reason square enix decides to turn its attention to you and especially when you are in the spotlight in some kind of regard whether Uh you're a content creator or Mm -hmm. you are participating in a tournament like this i mean i think that's a good thing to be aware of because no matter how many times you think it you know, these things are okay by community standards. Yeah. They are not okay by community terms Community standards of are not the terms of service, people. <laughs> it's so hard. It's hard because, like, yeah. we've had, I mean, we've talked about it on the podcast yeah. before, too. And even with, like, World Race. Yep. And we had a yep. whole episode specifically about, like, the pros and cons of third-party tools in mm-hmm. MMOs, even outside of 14. And, like, how other games handle them and what that means. And, like, while there are many good things and, you know... Uh, good things that can come from them the the just fact of the matter is that whether you know it or not if you are broadcasting those things should square enix ever decide to smite you they will (laughs) and they can and that's in their purview Mm -hmm. and uh especially for things like this yeah um, it's it's their event and the biggest thing to me like this is pvp so we want everyone to be on the same level right even a little thing like seeing people's cast time and that's just too much of an advantage Mm-hmm. Even though it might seem like it's not, it is because the other person doesn't have that. Right. That's a really good point, honestly, especially in PvP. In in PvE, it's a scripted battle. The thing, the same thing happens all the time. But in PvP, you are literally responding to the information that mm-hmm. is being fed to you on the screen. And if you have something else that lessens that response time by even a fraction of a second to respond in a different way, it is a very different mm-hmm. game. It does give an advantage. You're totally right, Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, interesting. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's not (laughs) honestly. Oh, no. Um, But it had to be done. I feel bad for those people. I I actually, like, went out and, like, like, tried to console those people because they were super salty. Some of them were like, I'm not playing PvP anymore. I hate Mm. SC. And I feel for them. But at the same time, they have to understand, like, that's the rules. And yeah basically learn from the situation yeah. yeah we've known for years that third-party tools are fight club and you're not supposed to talk <laughs> yeah, about yeah. it and you're definitely <laughs> that's actually not... what part of yeah. what i said too yeah it's like we've seen this happen like so many yeah. times on mm-hmm. streams with like raiders and like world mm-hmm. first and stuff i've said the same thing to them <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. would you broadcast fight club well then maybe don't <laughs> broadcast your mods and you know some people are like well i have it on all the time and so i was just it doesn't matter. Like, just yeah. police your brass. Yeah. To use a saying that I haven't said in a long time, but it's it's just like just think about it. Show what you what what you want to show, and especially with PvP, get rid of anything that gives you an advantage, even if it's the tiniest advantage. Just get rid of it. You. Yeah. I mean, as I I don't mean this in a mm-hmm. again a disparaging way, but just use your skills. Like, yeah. just if you are a top tier player, it probably doesn't actually matter a lot of yeah. times if you have those things, to be quite frank. Just show your skills. Like, it's going to be either way, like, whether you use those or don't, the chance of using them, you getting disqualified, you missing out on going to fan fest, you missing out on thousands of dollars versus you just playing using your inherent skill, knowledge of the game mode and things like that. That is a far more sure bet yep. than and, anything yeah. on the opposite side. And like sure. someone said earlier, you won't have that stuff on stage yeah. anyway. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, and it's, you know, in, in these kind of competitive environments, even something like World First, even if one person is caught on a team, yes, everybody else is then just That's- assumed that they are also participating in this. And it's, yeah. while not always the case, uh-huh. it's just... It that, sucks. that was the <laughs> that was the suckiest thing about it that like it would just be one person who was streaming and got reported and the whole team get eliminated yeah. for that and that's oh. yeah. <laughs> it's so sad but there's yeah. nothing else that can be done really yeah I would also just encourage the community as always we talked about this with race race world first we'll talk about it here too mm-hmm. but please don't diminish the event and diminish the players just right. because something like this happens too. Like, nothing brings down the energy more than, like, 
having the quarterfinals and then seeing people in chat like saying something like well this whole competition is is you know stupid because people were caught cheating using third party tools so it's not even real uh, and it's like and it, yeah, I literally was watching the comments this morning <laughs> while I was watching rewatching oh, the quarterfinals and it's like again Square Enix will deal with it in a way that they see fit um we are not any of us holier than that <laughs> you know what i mean like we have all probably at some point done something in some game that would be against that game's terms of service we have all probably pushed the gray areas or we've had a bad day where we were rude to someone or we've had whatever it right, is right right anything that could be reportable it doesn't mean that just because somebody got reported for something that they are like scum of the earth, garbage right. human beings that hate everybody mm -hmm. and are out to ruin the community. And right. it probably just means that they are a normal human being. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that oh, they, yeah. just used, they just used a thing and they did something a little dumb and they got caught for it. Yeah. And like, it's again, Square Enix will deal with it in a way that they see mm -hmm. fit. Don't let it discredit everything else. Don't let it even be a reason to target harassment against people or the rest of the team. Um, and again, for anybody, whether you're a content creator or not, just be wise about this. Right. The safest thing you can do is to just not do it at all, at all times, yeah. for any reason. I've <laughs> like, never streamed with anything like that, ever. Yeah. <laughs> me neither. Yeah, I mean, there's there's yeah. no reason to. And the, the one that always kills me is then, and, and then they get caught. And then they play the victim card. It's like... <laughs> I don't, I, I don't understand that mentality. I don't. Yeah, some I just, of them did I do will. that. But I think now it's been like, you know, that was weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're, they're starting to like realize their mistake and like move on. From mm -hmm. what I've seen, like, yeah. I hope they like, like I said, learn from the lesson. And because there, there's going to be future tournaments. This is oh, not yeah. the last <laughs> tournament yeah. ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now they know, like, don't do that again. And you can participate and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we did have a lot of teams make it through the quarterfinals um, and some really great ones. I mean, a couple of these I kind of remembered. I'm just going to list them all because I figured for anybody who hasn't been watching, mm -hmm. um, you might not know any of these teams. Right. You might get to FanFest and then you might just be like, who the heck I don't know, people? here are these people. Yeah. So like, I figured we could at least toss some names out so that Let's do it. Yeah. we can talk mm -hmm. about it. So we had um, Ver Kittens, we had WOD Revengeance, Bog Yarzen, Omni, Deadbeats, Eat Bug. <laughs> I like Eat Bug. Um, Gnosis, who I recognize. Although, mm -hmm. were they pre were they previously Diagnosis? Did they shorten um, their name down to Gnosis? Let me click on the name. I have it right here in front of me. Diagnosis Skill Issue. No, that's a different team. Different? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we had Gnosis. We had Crazy Thursday. We had Holding W, Excalibros, Wolfus, and Four Clovers that advanced mm. to the quarterfinals. And then obviously when we get, as we talk through the quarterfinals and the event, we'll mention who actually made it to the finals that you'll be all be seeing at FanFest. But um, from these teams, I mean, Brian, you're familiar so much with the scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I you know, do a commentary for a lot of these tournaments. So, like I said, a mix of them are like veteran tournaments who play before in, in community run tournaments, and some of them actually played in the SEs tournament before. But some mm. of them are like, this is their first time. This is their first tournament, and they made it that far. So, <laughs> super yeah. cool to see. Yeah. Was Wolfus was a new team, right? They kind of um, came up like a dark horse, if yeah, I remember, Wolf, or a, di Wolfus, a dark wolf. <laughs> Wolfus, Wolfus was in Fro um, Frosty's community tournament that was like, was yes. it last month? Oh yeah, my god, time uh, flies so fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. I passed that one and I'm like, was it last month? Yeah, they were both yeah. Like... What is yeah, time? They <laughs> they won that tournament and we no <laughs> one okay, not no one, but a lot of us did not know these players. <laughs> <laughs> and they end up winning that tournament. And that yeah. was like it's not like a like amateur tournament like for new players. That was like mm -hmm. a legitimate lip top tier players tournament. And they won. Right. You know yeah. the the deeper you get into communities, the more hardcore people you will encounter. And for a long time, and we hated it, PvP was second class and people did not get into it. So the people who were into it became very good. So yeah, that community contest is just as big, if not a little bit more sweaty, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> of, stages of, of, you know, the, the SE wide one. I mean, yeah. it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that... Um, 
that's kind of how like solo queue was kind of turning to where like we're on six, season seven now mm-hmm. and a lot of these players have just been playing since season one they're getting so good they're like knowing everything right. and it's getting harder and harder for new players to like jump in even mm-hmm. though there is ranking like you start on mm-hmm. bronze and you like get up there but like the difference between a person who gets platinum for the first time this season versus the person who's been playing since season one and they're crystal yeah. and you have to go against that it's it's harder but like if you like keep at it you like could like get to that mm-hmm. level so <laughs> yeah yeah you know i think i i definitely wanted to ask was you know in in we're just talking about um you know this stage but were there any like meta shakeups like you know, a oh, team yeah. came in here for the first time and they did something that you just did not see before. Well, one of the teams ran four healers. Like <laughs> <laughs> wow. Frosty, Frosty was on it for like the like half of the commentary. He kept bringing up the four healer team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wow. that was unexpected. They did um well the four healers and maybe Paladin, I think it was. Hard to remember. So four and, and a half healers. More than yeah. Half healers. <laughs> yeah. Um, in general, like meta things have been shifting a lot because they keep adjusting the jobs yeah. little by little every like patch. And also as the light party scene develops, mm-hmm. we're like doing different trying different comms. Um I will say a lot of time NA players do look at JP. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Because once again, JP plays every week and th- so they have that skill for light party higher mm-hmm. than us and some of us will look at the comp and like bring it to our own comps. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, adjust it. Yeah. Mm. I think the biggest thing recently that we took was Bard being good. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, hey, good news. Good, good news, job, Bard Bards. mains. But also, Rip Bard. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for the longest time, no one wanted to run Bard for anything. Mm. He is too supportive. The LB's not good enough. But then we realized, like, the second, this silence is like three seconds long. That's a super strong CC to coordinate in light party. And then um, SC nerfed it the following yep. patch. <laughs> but people are still running it though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can still do plays around it. You can still do yeah, plays yeah, yeah. around it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things I even noticed um, coming from a background and doing a lot of competitive Overwatch, right? Mm. That there's kind of like two things, the solo queue versus group, like Mm -hmm. group play, Mm -hmm. Um, as well as like you were saying, just being in the actual scene for long enough. And that is not meant to be a discouragement because everybody has to start somewhere. If you come in and you're getting stomped, it just means that every death is an opportunity to learn. And that a lot of the players around you have a a huge wealth of knowledge that sure you're playing catch up to try and like catch yourself up on, but the knowledge is there for you to mine and learn from and grow in and implement yourself as you practice. Right. But I mean, Having those team play things was something that we saw a lot even in Overwatch come together in ways where, um, you know, big hitters or like big impact limit breaks might always be like the the flashiest up front. But when you start actually getting into the nuance of team play versus just individual solo play, that's where those things, those CCs, those setups, those co-plays, those complementary yeah. play styles, those unusual strategies that you can pull off start to really get refined. And for me, that's the most exciting part of these game <laughs> modes. I mean, I am still hoping they'll put in ranked teams at some point because I do think that would be amazing. But of course you can, like you were saying, Brian, um, run your own and, you know, get groups together. And I know Revival does a ton of that um, yeah. and is really welcoming to a lot of players so that you can come in and experience team play. Yeah. But it's so fun. Yeah. I, personally, I'm, don't know if I'm ready for a ranked light party in game. Um, I just I'm we've had Ryan. it before. <laughs> we've had it before, <laughs> and it was just like sussy, like people yeah. cheating and all. Oh, yeah. Mm. But um, I I would be happy for this. Is just my opinion, by the way. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> a, a, a casual light party where it's unranked, mm. but you can still play yeah. with team versus team. Mm. I think that would. Um, I would love I that would, option yeah. unranked for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was, um, honestly, I love, okay, I have to ask you, how did the healer team do, yeah. first off? Oh, they won, they, they won. Team- <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they won, and then um, they had another match later in the tournament, and they switched comps. Um, oh, yeah. That comp as well. What um, team was it? Do you remember off the top of your head which team? 
pulled the gutsy heels and had some kind of bold comps. It was Bog Yarzen, um, and that's a team that serves on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My Exciting. ex teammate is doing meta comps. Bog Yarzen, okay, all so right. We, all so right, we know right. who the half healer was then. I love it. Yes. I think he was on Paladin. <laughs> Do you remember anything else from these quarterfinals team, or uh, sorry, from the semifinals teams mm-hmm. um, before we move on to quarterfinals? Was there anything specifically from those? Mm. It's okay if not, too. Like, no worries. Is there a team that had the best uh, adventure plates at the beginning of a match? That is important. <laughs> some, some, <laughs> we, me and Frosty kept trying to remind people, like, yeah, please. make sure to please do your plates because that's what people are going to see, like, especially in mm-hmm. that actual fan fest. Yeah, you know, you know, a lot of people don't play PvP, but they can see like the hype, they can see like the funny glamours and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, to this day, my favorite PvP team, <laughs> the one that took, I don't even know if they're still together, I'm, maybe they are, um, but in the Wolves League that I got to commentate. Mm-hmm. They were the all Lala team, mm-hmm. and they always had these coordinated outfits. And like one time, they were all Lala fell cultists, and they had these <laughs> hilarious adventure portraits. It was I think so good. <laughs> I think that's the actually the Australian team that plays like a Materia data center. Yes, I mm-hmm. love them. Yeah, and they're it's so amazing together. how excited people get for that mm-hmm. because you're right, Brian. It's like. It's a way to show something about your team Mm -hmm. um, that is memorable to people who probably Mm -hmm. don't know anything about where you ranked or what you, you know, like make something trademark about your team and put it on the plates. Because I will say, and I always say, I believe it is just as important as whether or not you play <laughs> with the match. Look, look, we all know, we all know glamour is the true end game of 14. So like if Mm -hmm. you have the best glams coming into a match, you're gonna get the cheers. (laughs) It's the intimidation <laughs> factor, you know. Yeah, and and, yeah. and they and they have team colors too. Like they're in, they have like jerseys. Um, I don't know what colors they have set on, but I know they were allowed to choose. Mm. Um, mm. For um for feasts, my team was green. The winning team was red, and there was also an orange team and a blue team. So I wonder what colors they're doing. Yeah, I remember those, those jerseys are really cool. Mm. Yeah, I still have mine in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> It, I, the only thing I don't like about Maya, it just says Brian. I feel like that's basic. I, I want my <laughs> Ricardo Brian, in there. Oh, you just sure. set something up with SE where, like, you do a gag at the top of the show where you, like, walk on with one of the teams in your green, <laughs> like, and you try and, like, sit down at the chair, and the player's like, no, no. Ready to go, coach. Like, Brian, put me in. get over here. Put me in, coach. You're not playing this time. You're casting. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be funny. That's actually really good. That's... <laughs> So that takes us to the quarterfinals, which was the big streamed event, right? So the semifinals were not streamed. Um, Give everybody a bit of a shot just to come in, get in Mm -hmm. some matches. Um, And then the quarterfinals were what we had most recently, and they were streamed. You can also, for anybody who's curious, watch the VOD on Twitch. Um, And if you go to the, uh, like, FanFest website, um, if you go to the... uh, CCRC uh, NA webpage that they have. They also have like links and things in the rankings and the brackets right. so that you can go click and watch the VOD itself. Speaking um, of the website, I think the website is so cool. Like you can see like the teams, there's like mm-hmm. links to every single match. It's like you can see like who's placed where. Like they set that up too. <laughs> like if this player was top 100 before, at what season? It's like super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's great that they went that extra mile. Yeah, because that's like we were talking about that really gets you into these teams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what were some of the highlights from the matches for the quarterfinals for you? Highlights. Oh, my God. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're like forcing you to dig back through the dredges <laughs> of your memory. <laughs> um, One of the last matches. Um, I, can, I think she's seen the team names here, right? Holding W versus Gnosis was one mm. of the spiciest matches in the tournament. Um, so close. <laughs> and, like, the things they lost to were, like, mechanics on Clockwork, t- Castle Town. Like, that was, like, the big changing <laughs> place. Mm. So it was, Brian. like, so, it was so hyped to commentate that. And, like, I, um, like, 
I was rooting for one specific team. <laughs> Just gonna be real. Uh-huh. Who was it? You gotta tell us. Gnosis. And they uh-huh. took it. And I was just, like, so happy. Like, um, one of the SE staff was like, oh, my God, you guys are so happy for that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this because the last time and the first time you and I got to commentate together recently, Brian, mm-hmm. um, our, I think one of my favorite matches that we got to commentate was also Clockwork with the great Tatami chaos that occurred. Oh my <laughs> so hearing you say that this was also a Clockwork chaos, a perfect map match, like, makes me even happier that sounds so good that sounds so good we also did um what did we do like 10 summoners or something yeah 10 summoners (laughs) that was chaos beautiful perfect (laughs) (laughs) that would definitely be chaos it was wild it was impossible to tell whose baja blast belonged Mm -hmm. to who um destruction was everywhere uh i could not stop cry laughing it was very fun really want to talk about Uh, thank you for that (laughs) sorry so sorry um so that last match was amazing um, was there anything else the, from the quarterfinals that mm. stood out to you? Uh, I can't think of anything super specific. I'm trying to think about like Frosty's POV because I'm sure mm. he had like a different highlight. Mm. But I, it doesn't come to mind right now. <laughs> no worries. I mean, with that, we talked a little bit about unconventional picks. So what were some of the popular composition mm. picks mm. that you saw? A lot of teams ran White Mage. Mm. Which it's has been a thing. It's, the best. <laughs> it's been a thing since season one. Did SCP's anybody else nerf- hear Rook's ego just inflate? Just like <laughs> <that cold? laughs> well, I'm a healer main too, but I like more like roulette into all of them. I'll play Astro and Sage a decent amount, but I do play Wine Mage too. Um, but yeah, Wine Mage was like a super common pick, as expected. Polymorph is still like super strong. Um, it's just uncleansable. You can't cleanse the, cleanse the polymorph. Um, I believe we saw we saw a lot of ninjas again, um, which is kind of funny because ninja was nerfed last patch, yeah. but people still ran it and it's did like the bards. Really well. They were really strong, and then they nerfed it, and they're slowly learning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, SE's patches for PvP have been like strictly for like tournament, like party play. Mm. They, like they say it in the they do this in that little like summary thing now on the mm. notes. On notes. And he like been saying like we're doing this because of tournament play, and that's super like that makes you super happy because that's not something we had for the feast. Mm-hmm. Everything was right. based on solo queue or mm-hmm. nothing. <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> nothing <laughs> Feel uh, just what they wanted to do at the time. Yeah, yeah we would not get any information. There was yeah. no summary. It was just like they'll nerf this number by a little bit, and we'll be like, what? Why? We don't know. <laughs> but now they like tell you everything. Like, this is yeah. because it's has high usage. This is because it has low usage. This is because it's doing too much um, damage overall. So it's super amazing to see that. Awesome. So that took us to the four teams out of those ones from the mm. uh, quarter. Sorry, the semifinals. Oh my gosh! Now I'm doing a two fusion. <laughs> out of the, it makes it, it's making me feel better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that made it to the quarterfinals. No. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, uh... correct. Okay, yes. Um, so that was Verkittens, Bogyarzen, uh, Gnosis, and Wolfis that made it. And we yeah. talked a little bit about Bogyarzen, uh, obviously having some interesting picks, having uh, Sir on the team, former teammates of yours as well, too, some really mm-hmm. strong players. Epic Paladin, really everybody, I mean, the whole team, I can't wait to see, but from what I've seen with Sir, if you haven't, and you're curious about watching how Paladin can be used and like optimized in something like PvP, go watch some of those matches, (laughs) because Sir is always blowing my mind with like the cheeky covers and the like interesting ways to use its capabilities um, to support team play, which is really cool. Uh, Wolfis sort of newcomers to the scene with Frosty's yeah. tournament, but that have just, like, powerhoused in. But what about Verkittens and Gnosis? What kind of yeah. info? You said you were cheering for Gnosis. Yeah. So, like, what kind of uh, thoughts do you have on both of those teams? I, I want to add something else as well. Um, So, it actually turned out, like, perfect with data center representation. Um, Verkittens is, like, a crystal data center main. Bogdarzen mm. is an Aether data center. Um, Gnosis is, like, full Dynamis. Mm-hmm. Which is like Ooh. super rare because that huh. data center is like small. And no then one Wolfis, is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Wolfis is there. 
super, super empty because there's no people on it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, the entire the population of Dynamis is in this PvP tournament. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> yeah, and Wolfis is a primal team, so like, I'm I'm gonna be like like in my commentary talk about how like this is data center um, rivalry mm-hmm. um, in this Ooh. tournament. So like, I'm super excited for that, but. When it comes to Ver Kittens, let me look at them right here. I, they played in the, um, the previous tournament before, the, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. SES Community Cup. So they had tournament experience. Um, like I said, they're Crystal Data Center meme. A lot of them are in solo queue. Yeah, they um, they only have five members. So, like, yeah, it's a little scary in case something happens. Everybody, everybody <laughs> eat their vegetables and yeah. But yeah, they're a good team. They have a lot of experience in previous tournaments and stuff. Really happy to see them because that's to me, um, teams like that that have been stick around since mm-hmm. the beginning of CC to now is really rare because a lot of people like end up like swapping teams mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like Sir, for example, Bog is like something new for him. Like he's played in Light Party, but he played like under like a team called Hitman. He played it yep. under a team called the Australian team. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't the, uh, revert PvP. That's I what it is. It's revert. Yeah. It is revert. Yeah. Yeah. He played under that team and now he's with this team. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, what was the other team? Um Gnosis, team... Wolfis. Yeah, Gnosis. Gnosis would be like, I would say, is the newcomer or not newcomers, but like out of the four teams, they're the underdog for sure. Mm. Um but High rooting for them, dynamics representation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bring some more people to your server. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring them mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and uh, Shan is on that team. The, the player who I mm. said was Aww. in the commentary. I said who was like um, new, and I've seen her like skill rise from nothing to like playing mm-hmm. a tournament and now being a finalist. So love that. That makes them. me so yeah. happy. There are also five members. Also. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <Everybody>. <laughs> just hope everybody is on their a game nobody's sick nobody mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and and if and if god forbid something happens brian will have his jersey ready to jump right in and <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like i don't even know what would happen i hope yeah 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 i mean that feels like at that point they scramble a group of they just developers together and they, the would they devs bring do a someone fill in? team. Yeah, like what would, because <laughs> I know at least in the rules specifically, right? One of the things that they did say in the rules, and this is a little note for anybody who's looking at maybe getting involved with the EU or JP mm-hmm. ones, that when you had solidified your lineup, be it minimum five players up to max seven players, that was it. Like yeah. that was the lineup. You're not yeah. allowed to submit for changes. You're not allowed to, you know, like swap somebody halfway through, um, uh, like, you know, like halfway through the, the run of yeah. the competition itself kind of thing uh-huh. and like bring in a different player or something like that's it. So yeah, I wonder how they would handle that if one of those five man teams, I mean, I would assume they just wouldn't be able to play, but yeah, probably yeah. actually um, for JP Feast Tournament in 2019, like the FanFest one, mm-hmm. um, two teams actually did not know, did not show up. Mm. And they just played the finals, like grand finals. So they just grand didn't finals. show up? Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's insane. I, uh, that was, that was a topic what? in the PV community for like years. <laughs> um, was there a reason? Were they taking a stance? Did like something happen IRL? Like there, what? there was some. So I'm you know I'm not super part of the JB community, mm. but I did hear like there was a lot of um, shyness factors to it. Like sure. they didn't want them wanting to be on stage and be judged. They got um, scared or okay. just psyched yeah. themselves out. I can understand yeah. that. Oh, it makes That's sense. I mean, it's one of those things where I think if you are going to enter a tournament like this, you do need to really take into account the scope of it. That's right. not, that is yeah. not to discourage anybody, mm-hmm. right? Like, go, like, do something brave. Even if you bomb, like, on the actual stage in the event, you'll still have had a memory that only a handful of people will have ever had mm-hmm. in our community to have been a part of it, right? To be there and and be a part of this event. 
Um, it can be so daunting, but I, yeah, that, that is wild. I had not heard that story about JP and I just can't imagine like you put all this time and energy and the financial investment mm -hmm. into the teams and locking everything down and then like having all the spectacle and then to just don't show up. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, you know, see crystal conflict tournaments for the community. We thought this would pretty much never happen. And we will always reference like, um, the past tournaments, the stuff that went wrong, like that, people consider like the JP no showing as like mm -hmm. a detriment to like ever having a CC tournament. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, just like also like there was some drama with players at the NA tournament as well. Like people always reference like uh, we don't want to have that repeated. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But you know, it's, it ended up not being true. They're doing this tournament regardless of what happened mm -hmm. in the past. <laughs> Wow. Well, I am fingers crossed hoping that both for kittens and Gnosis, all five people, absolutely good to go. <laughs> absolutely Please. fine. Please. I, I mean, yeah. especially like considering their stories and like you're saying, mm -hmm. this mix that we have of these incredible teams. I mean, Bogyarzin having a mix of like veteran players and serving on it now. Wolfis being newer to the scene, but like coming up with a hungry appetite for just like Wolf. taking a bite. Literally. Yeah, thank you, Wolf Pun. <laughs> Literally, uh, like to take a bite out of the competition. And it's so cool that they do represent all four of the NA yeah. Davis members. Yeah. Like, what a it's nice... Great coincidence honestly yeah, yeah. it was a coincidence there there is a person from crystal on three of the four i just wanted to say that as a person oh well from that's crystal. because yeah, crystal is the best um. and uh everybody get off our backs <laughs> not so for party finder just gonna say that but for pvp it seems we're good <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so um since we talked a little bit about each of the teams um I guess let me make this more of a general question. So, Brian, yeah. as we look ahead, as all of you, we encourage you, if you listen to this between now and FanFest, do a little research on these teams, check them out, watch the footage from mm -hmm. the quarterfinals. But, Brian, what would you say that, like, the community should look out for while they play, like, while they watch this tournament at FanFest? Like... Is there, you know, even if you're not a big PvP person, uh -huh. is there, like, something that you can really look for in these matches or that you can watch? Is it, you know, monitoring limit breaks? Is it, um, you know, watching certain players? Is it, like, are there any tips you would give even those who aren't big into PvP about, like, how to engage with this and still feel mm -hmm. like they can kind of follow what's happening? Yeah, so, um, in general, first I would say is that, um, remember, these players are... Um, putting their hearts into this. Um, so, like, try and cheer them out supportively. If, like, if you're in the Twitch chat or in the audience, um, even if you don't know PvP, like, give some hype to that. Um, even just the commentators, too. Like, this, for me, this is my first live thing. I, I mean, I've done the streams, but I've never done it on stage before. So, like, try to bring the hype into that. In terms of gameplay, um, definitely look for limit breaks. I think that's a big one. A lot of big plays happen in reg regards to like coordinating limit breaks or just like singling people out with limit breaks. So you can see that in the UI, um, which should be visible. Um, you see the UI and then like, if someone has it lit up, that means they have limit break ready. And yeah, look mm -hmm. out for that. Cause that means a play is about to happen. Um, Frosty, Frosty's um, commentary leans toward like, like a new player experience. So he'll be like explaining things like, um, in a way that people can understand really easily. I might be a little bit more analytical, but he's going to be like really guiding people to show what case was happening. So definitely listen to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, like look out for like the objective too, because a lot of action happens with the crystal. Um, the camera's going to be controlled by um, SE staff most likely. So uh, just keep an eye out where the camera's pointing and shifting to. Mm. Yeah, and be hyped for overtime if there's any overtime. Yes. <laughs> um, that's what I think. What do you think, though? What else? What else? Oh, I mean, I think you really, I think you really hit it. Like so much of the flow of combat does center around those limit breaks. Yeah. Um, and even if you like, I mean, we have on the Final Fantasy 14 website. 
little breakdown guides about yeah. what each of the classes mm -hmm. do in PvP um, that they've put up there that are literally just like, it's just a summary, right? Yeah. Even mm -hmm. if you just read over that, even if, you know, you heard us talking today about Bard, White Mage, uh, you heard us talking about uh, Ninja, you heard us talking about Paladin a bit, right? Like, even if you just glimpse at those, um, I think having a little bit of an idea of what those classes do, if you're not that familiar with PvP, can help you even then make that, like, next step from limit breaks to what do those limit breaks do right yeah if we're sitting on a dragoon limit break if i see that dragoon vanish from the field mm -hmm. that's like the moment to go where's he gonna come down and wait to see like you know because eventually he'll drop in is it going to be effective or not right so you don't have to have a ton of technical knowledge to kind of play around that and um, like you said keeping an eye on the objective on the timer that makes a big part of it too because in overtime the pressure of the situation is amplified tenfold yeah. <laughs> like if you have one team that's at the disadvantage uh time wise and you're in overtime they have to make their stand on that crystal so everything that happens around that is going to have that much more pressure because they don't have the luxury of playing around the map yeah um and yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Yeah, no, Brian, I really think you covered pretty much all mm. of the basic stuff. I don't know, Al, do you know, Fusion, do you have any thoughts on like what has made PvP something like when you're watching it has made it easier to understand or break down? Well, for me, knowing who has CC mm. is the thing that I'm definitely looking for. Like, where is that bard? Because that well plays <laughs> CC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like i love the limit breaks i love dragoons cruising down and like taking half out half the team out but like just seeing the other team react to well play cc is great and i i love to just see that scramble and then them control it because i can't i don't know what i'm doing in pvp i don't know what happens when oh, all of a sudden i can't do anything and i'm dead but to uh -huh. see people who can actually go through their list of priority going, okay, I've been CC'd. Who is it probably from? What are they probably going to set up with it? How do I counter? That's super fun to see. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell, but that's, you know, that's what you guys do a great job in casting. Yeah. You know, saying, oh, look, ah, and they adjusted to it this way. So it's really, for me, look out, I'm going to look out for the big CC moment and what happens right okay. after. You know, kind mm -hmm. of like the initiation in, in a league or, or a, a Dota, you know. <laughs> that's the only that's the only like role that i ever played was the initiator or the team fight starter or the you know like the stunner that was me mm, got <laughs> it see me me that's i would point. just i would jump yeah. in on machinist drop my turret and be like you can't stand here for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> areas of denial yes yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean i will true. say i'll do you know the um warrior chain poles have been yeah. unreal mm. oh, <laughs> a lot of stuff or like clockwork right the CCs sure. like you're talking about, whether mm -hmm. it's like, so CC for anybody who doesn't know, crowd yeah. control, right? Mm -hmm. So basically anything that is going to hamper, limit, or like control either the mobility mm -hmm. or the ability to take action of enemies um, on the field, uh, right. your opponents, if you will. So that can include anything like monk, uh, like bopping you around like a mm -hmm. pinball that can <laughs> include warrior chain pulling you that can include mm -hmm. silences that it can include anything that'll like hamper um uh my favorite polymorph obviously which yeah. should mm -hmm. never be nerfed <laughs> don't you dare square your i think it was adjusted a little but like yeah. you know it's been it's seven timeless. seasons i don't know if they're gonna nerf it <laughs> <laughs> um but all of those things, you're totally right. They set up opportunities. Mm -hmm. And if you can, mm -hmm. like, even just see the little thing pop up above somebody's head, like um, like how, you know, uh, damage numbers pop up over people, mm -hmm. like that kind of thing. If you see the little CC thing pop up, like the silence indicator or something over somebody's <laughs> head, or if you see it on their actual, like, debuff bar, mm -hmm. um, that can oftentimes mean that they are either likely about to die <laughs> or that somebody's about to do a really great play yes. that makes them yeah. die. Yeah. Yeah. Everything just goes in slow motion. You just see the little... Or that <laughs> clutch cover comes out from the paladin. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, There's so many things that could, that could happen right at that point of initiation. And I love watching that specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, you know, <laughs> not to copy what everybody else said, right? But yeah, I think, mm -hmm. especially if you're somebody that's kind of new to watching PvP... Um, I think the limit breaks watching those will be kind yep. of, you know, for those big plays, yeah. that'll be fun to look. 
uh look at and i think i mean i love a little chaos so yeah the the, the crowd control stuff just you know mess mess stuff up see how people react and that's always fun to see uh yeah. what happens with that yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mana mana's one that we didn't talk oh, about yeah. oh yeah it's a resource yeah. that's visible we can't see like guard cooldown and pure cooldown but you can see mm -hmm. mana and don't realize like this person has no more resources and they might go down or they have to retreat mm -hmm. right yeah another yeah. one is maps people people love the map chaos that's <laughs> definitely a big part of the commentary like uh, calling out the turbulence coming up and the uh, Robots coming out on the clock tower. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely something to look out for. And because plays happen around that, mm -hmm. no matter what you do, you can't stop that. You can't stop it. Do you no. do you have a favorite mm -hmm. map to commentate on, Brian? Uh yeah, it's, it's clock tower. Clock, yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't want to make assumptions, yeah. but after everything I've heard here today, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Frosty's is cloud nine. He will go on and cloud nine uh, all the yeah. time. Now, Rook, I know you've done some other community run uh, PvP stuff. Do you have a favorite map that you like to to clock tower? Clock tower. <laughs> Easy, 100% <laughs> it's Clock Tower. Are you yeah. kidding me? It is such nonsense, and I love it. But it's fun nonsense. Right. Like the those environmental effects create opportunities mm -hmm. for the flow of encounters to change in a split second. And it also gives some, I think, unique classes the chance to shine. Right. Because you can use things on those map for strategies. You can play around things mm -hmm. like the tatami mats. You can, you know, stun somebody on the mat. You can, you know, make mm -hmm. it really hard. You can slow them so that they're, like, stuck on it for much longer. You can... There's you know so what? many ways. Yeah, that's a really cool one. So Dancer, LB is Charm, and you know, it makes the mm -hmm. person like face your character. A strategy you can use is if someone's looking away, use Dancer Charm and turn them around to look at the robot's gaze attack. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do oh. about it. You can't cleanse that. You can't guard that. It just happens, yeah. Wow. That's so it's good. So, it's so hard to pull off because the robot has to be there. The person has to be in mm -hmm. position. And you have to have LB ready. But, like, it could happen. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah you know, that's that's the skill. Like, identifying those those moments where you're like, if I do this, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, people... People always rag on Smash Brothers for Final Destination, and I do too, because when I play Smash Brothers, it's not tournament, so I want all the things on. Turn mm -hmm. everything on. I want the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. there's something about that, right? There's something about that counterplay. It's it's looking at a completely different segment of your skill. Skill on Final Destination is knowing your character and the other character, but then you add the stage and the weirdness on top of it. I don't know. It's more compelling for me. And I, I see that in Clock Tower, Cloud nice. Nine. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's I don't even really play PvP that much, but I'm going to be looking out for those matches on Cloud Nine and Clock mm -hmm. Tower. I just I just want to see that crazy like dancer Clock Tower clutch play, like mm -hmm. win a match now. <laughs> like that's right. oh, man. <laughs> so like hype. if there was ever a time for that to just like happen. Yes. That'd Fine, be awesome. Awesome. Also, although those listeners will not be experiencing this live, if you're listening after the fact, thank you mm. so much, Alpha Prime, for the 50 gifted subs Whoa. in the chat. That was amazing. In honor of Brian or Ricardo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for that. Um, Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <that's fun. laughs> you know, uh, no, Clock Tower is so fun. I mean, perhaps the only disadvantage of that map is the fact that it can sometimes be a very fast sweep mm. because it's a bit like smaller. To, I mean, I don't actually know Swingy, if it's like smaller, yeah. smaller, but it like, I don't know. To me, it, it feels very much more like hitting your objective can go much more quickly. Mm. But I think part of that is just because um, kind of the setup of it, but then also all of the different environmental things. Mm -hmm. So that makes it really fun to me. And yeah, I always, that one's always one to look out for, but cloud nine is kind of the meme map of the yeah. community. So <laughs> a lot of jokes usually happen around that one too. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they're rouletting the maps. Like this mm. new wheel spin or something. So like they have to learn all the maps the teams. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this kind of takes us then to uh, you know, what can people look for as they watch? But this takes us to as well another question. Um, as we just kind of talk generally about the current PvP scene before we wrap up. Mm. Why should people play F Final Fantasy 14 PvP, Brian? Why should they do it? Why should they play it? Sell us on it. Super 
super super underrated it's like super balanced right now like we're talking about mm. the jobs but like every single job actually works which is so rare in games yeah like there's always like a meta like even like mm -hmm. i just jumped into guild wars too and i know there's some <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like square enix did a really good job with the balance the jobs play very well like um not like how so pve is great and all but like there's um, a job identity in PvP job mm -hmm. kits that are not there in PvE. Yeah. Like, Ninja yes. feels like an actual assassin. Machinist feels like a sniper. Like, there's a lot of cool things like that. Um, Summoner feels and... like a menace. <laughs> 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 that's about it. Yeah, a lot, a lot of cool things like that. So I would recommend people try. Like, you don't have to, like, do ranked Crystal Conflict. The casual kill is, like, active all the time, every day on, like, every data center. Um that would be like a good place to start Frontlines gives good rewards that's something you could do in the daily um yeah and it's, it's just over super fun and like the community in general for the most part is super welcoming like this there's decent discourse um i run a stream team now i started a uh final fantasy 14 pvp stream team like um like eight weeks ago it's been it's almost a year for us and like a lot of us just like stream pvp as our main content and mm. like showcase and the positive side of it and stuff like that that's awesome yeah and in and, and double down on what you said too um just like the job identity with the 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 i say recent like it's it's been a while now we're in yeah. season seven yeah seven. it's but been like, over a year there's some yeah. really cool like just they double down kind of like on some of like the, the showiness of some of the yeah. stuff for these jobs like like when she just gets like a sniper limit break like that's cool as hell i love that um, <laughs> so like if if you're somebody that like you're kind of on the fence about PvP, but, like, you just really love the specific, like, vibe of, like, a certain job. It mm -hmm. might be fun to just jump in and kind of play around a little bit, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, for me, a lot of it is that the class identity is huge, right? Mm -hmm. It's fun to just be able to engage with your class or even classes that you don't particularly love to play in PvE, but within the setting of PvP. I felt so much more liberated to just, like pick up a bunch of classes and try like just like yeah. swap over to them and try them because the ability sets are also more controlled in that like mm -hmm. you just have a handful of abilities and of course there's still a ton of skill ceiling with that but yeah. it's not as like daunting as if you were to pick up a new pve class and it was already you know 90, yeah like 90 and you're sitting there going like what do these buttons do it's much easier to just actually like glimpse at it get a read on mm -hmm. it and then play with it and just try it out in a yeah. match and i think that the quickness of it as well like you can just kind of go in if you're finding that like when you're logging in you're just like eh, i mean i guess i'll go do tribe and i guess I'll, I don't know. I could try and do... I didn't get that one. Close. I didn't get that, like, 124 man hat I wanted. So, like, you try and cue and cue it. Like, you just sit there. Like, or you're like, oh, none of my friends are on and nobody wants to do treasure maps anymore. Like, you can literally just go to Wolf's Den and you can just... It's like potato chips. You can just cue, 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 cue. Eat another one. Have another. I have a little bit more. Thank you. Yes, I will. And then you like unlock the next tier of whatever your reward is, and you work through the reward track. Oh, yeah. You get more crystals. Yeah. You mm -hmm. like super rewarding. Yeah, yeah. To me, it feels like it's just a nice way to like roll something over, have fun, like keep in it, um, and work towards those different rewards. Get some stuff. Maybe even look at all the vendors and see if there's anything you haven't gotten because you can like, you know, transfer the currencies and mm -hmm. buy stuff like. Um, I, yeah, I think that's my kind of go-to. I don't know, Aldo, yeah. what, what would you say? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm there. I am at the point where I, it would just take a stiff breeze to push me over to be a PVP main instead of a PVE main. <laughs> Just because of the way. I was going to say, I'm like, how long is it going to take for Brian and Rook to just blow into the mic? And just try <laughs> just, and... I don't know if you can even hear it, but I'm trying. Because <laughs> the job identity is just so great. The matches are so much fun, right? There's the community that has always been there. So you can just go and join in and not know anything. And they're so helpful. And then we all have this super hype thing to get hype about, which is, Another thing that PvE had that PvP didn't have, at least as much, because we had races for a while. But that's, you know, that's community and it's great and, and everybody loves to watch it if you like to watch it. But PvP didn't have a whole lot of that. But now we're getting more and more and Light Party is just such a great format, I think. Yeah. To watch, especially. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's really like I, I think that this tournament is going to be one of those points that we look back at and go, yep, that's when we hit that second gear in PvP. And then yeah. we have 7.0 when who knows what the heck they're going to do. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. There's going to be about... a new job. Buzz, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Every single expansion, they have like practically reworked to PvP. Mm-hmm. Um, so like. Who, who, what's going to happen here? Are they going to do another rework or is this good right. enough? Right. It's a great time to get in right now to have the, the, the information and, and to know what 7.0 looks like and then kind of just start thinking about it once they start talking about it. I mean, we know that the fan fest, we are the first fan fest in a, I say we, I'm yeah. in a, but um, we know we're not going to get like the name of the job. If there is more than one, we might not even know that there's more than one. We might not even know where we're going still. <laughs> Yoshida we might, might even PvP be news. wearing like the world's most vague shirt. They might <laughs> Sam Raimi <laughs> us all over again. Who knows? Right. right. And with it being so low information on story and jobs, a big place where they could tell us things is PvP. Yeah. Right? Like Ooh. they can they can say, okay, well, here's what we are thinking of doing next. I think that, that it's a great point to tell us about it with the tournament yeah. going on too. So I don't know. It'll be, I, it'll I just be really game, think... gameplay and features. I think is what we'll yeah. we'll get an odd. You know, <laughs> we'll see graphic yeah. stuff, but I think PvP would be stuff. a really great yeah. opportunity mm. there as well. So yeah. I I think my answer is because it's a perfect time to get into it right now. Mm-hmm. Play PvP because it's perfect time right now. There's yeah. so much hype coming. Get in on the ground floor. Not quite, but right now. Get in on the, <laughs> get in on like the seventh floor of like the really really tall building. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's still that's yeah. close to the ground floor. Yeah. Built on what the community has done since Feast, you know, like it's great. It's really awesome that we're finally seeing it hit its stride. And I don't think we've seen anything yet, honestly. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, dovetailing off of that, mm. if players get into PvP, how would you suggest that if they want to become more competitive with it? What do you think are some of the steps to kind of lead them towards getting competitive, being, you know, like being able to work their ways up or like, you know, tackle things like the ranked queue or maybe even try to get into tournaments like this? Like, what do you think would kind of enable them to be able to reach that point? Yeah, I think the first step is like trying it out yourself, like do casual queue. Uh, mm-hmm. Next step is jumping to community stuff. So the, the, the main disc what I would recommend is PvP Revival. Um, they have mentors there. They have... Um, tips channels and so that's our um yeah channels if you like scroll through and stuff like that people will mentor help for free and all that stuff. <laughs> um and then revival also has like a communities list stuff where they list um people who want to get into like specific niches and stuff so like light party that would be like a there's a, there's a discourse for light party specific um there's like data center specific ones too like there's a discord called pvp primal so like you want to be invested in the primal side of the pvp communities that are, to like you know people to talk to hang out with and stuff like that um yeah just go from there we don't have a ton of youtube content i would say for pvp um (laughs) 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 but but twitch there's a decent amount of twitch streamers around a lot of a lot of the top players are streaming and you can like catch their content and learn from them seeing their how they play ask some questions yeah, those yeah. would be my main suggestions, I would think. Cool, cool. Right. I know that um, you participate in this one a lot, and it's adjacent, it's part of Revival, the um, Crystal Conflict roulette that happens yeah. on Thursdays. Like, you can hop in and do some, like, very chill environment kind of, uh, you know, match sets um, where you mm-hmm. usually, I think it's usually best uh, out of three. Yeah. Um, and then, like, you know, if you end up matched, you go more, obviously, uh, yeah. if you end up in a draw situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get to play against a wide range of experience players and um they usually give away like mock station items yes super cute yeah that Mm -hmm. that started like two months ago like brooke said it's every thursday um it's run by revival discord um some of the community members there um it's streamed um if that intrigues people it's streamed on the revival channel and there's usually two commentators to like hype up the event and stuff and yeah it's like it can be like your first experience into light party because you know light party uh, one thing that's 
hard for it is like finding people to play with. Um, but with that, you don't have to like have a team. You don't have to mm. like bring people along with you. You have like people setting that up for you. So that's a good intro. Um, but the other discords do have like looking for group, um, mm. looking for member type channels to like get into light party if you need that. Cool. Awesome. All <laughs> right. Well, we are near our time here. Uh, Brian, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, everybody, Brian, I'm sorry, Brian <laughs> Ricardo. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you can see him on stage at FanFest three weeks oh, we for the Crystal oh. Conflict Regional Championships in North America. <laughs> um, what else What else should people know? Where can they find you? Where, where should they keep up to date with you? Yeah, I stream a lot on Twitch, so twitch.tv slash Brian Ricardo. Um, Right now, like as I keep saying, I'm into Guild Wars right now, <laughs> but I'm still <laughs> playing 14's PvP quite often. Um, like I said earlier, um, my main content tends to be competitive and PvP focused, so I play like shooters, fighters from time to time. Um, and in Twitter, my Twitter at is Brian Ricardos with an S at the end. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can just find me talking about streaming stuff and 14 and other games I like. And my cat sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the cat tax. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you so much for joining us, Brian. I, I hope FanFest goes really well. We'll we'll see you out there. It's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be a hell of yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, come yeah. say hi to me. I'll be around. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if you want to find me on the internet, you can do that at Rafflederg, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. YouTube has an X because there was already a Rafflederg. I guess there's more than there's another one of me. I don't know. I don't know how that mm. works. Uh, Imposter. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. Zen's not here, so oh. you, you you can That's you can weird. you can say the, the the thing if you want. Oh sure, yeah. Well, normally, as I always say, you can find me here and only here, which is true. Mostly, uh, I'm on Twitter at the same name. It's it's down there somewhere. Have fun spelling it. It's Elizabeth. Um, <laughs> but I'm also on plus the word, word. won the number, shot the, the word. word. Yep. Our D and D Twitch channel, which we play a few games. There's a game just last night that our buddy Philip, who has helped out Gamer Escape in the past, uh, <laughs> runs. Uh, and tonight they're going to be playing their D and Diablo game. Um, so they're playing Ooh. through the story of Diablo two, as if they were some of the main characters. I'm not going to tell you where they are, however, because that would be big spoiler. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be playing through that tonight. I believe 10 Eastern. They usually say. I don't think that they start ever on time. It's fine. Zen usually says that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not in now. But uh, we do, you know, D&D. &D. Uh, we also talk about D&D. &D. There's going to be a who knows how long show about the recent playtest because there's so much to talk about. But yeah, so that's where you can find me. Twitter with that name and plus the word won the number shot the word here on Twitch. And Rick. Yes. Hi, you can find me uh, here on Twitch at Rookery. That's R-O-O-K-U-R-I. You can also find me over on YouTube at the same. And you can find me, at least for now, until it dies, on Twitter <laughs> yeah. at Rookery. <laughs> on All our social pan <laughs> panels, like, in a couple of weeks, we're just going to have, like, five more different social media <laughs> yeah. channels. Like, and everybody. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, but, yes, you can also still find me on Twitter at Rookery underscore, as well as on Instagram at just at Rookery. Um, we'll see what happens with Twitter. Who knows? But uh, if I'm not live on my own channel, I'm probably doing one of two podcasts, either this one or the Lightbringers for Guild Wars 2. And I've also been doing a variety of different shoutcasting or other special events. So just keep an eye out because we're probably playing games that you love or might love if you gave them a try. Um, and we're always getting hyped for 14 and beyond. And I can't wait for FanFest with all of you in a few weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, if you want to contact us here, just kind of in general uh, at the show here, a threat radio at gamerscape.com. You can throw us an email. We're also uh, on Twitter at a threat radio. And we're, of course, as gamerscape on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Discord, discord.gd slash gamerscape. We got an a threat radio channel on there. Where you can talk to us about the show. We got a Final Fantasy 14 channel where you can talk to us about Final Fantasy 14 or just a, a social channel. But it's just, it's just general. If you just want to talk about <laughs> things, that's, that's, we, we have that. We just, we, things, chat. And that's, it, that's it. That's it. That's Stuffing it. That's gonna be the first Aldino. Uh, Aldino, what is the show next week? What? Why are you asking oh, me? You just threw a new loop at Aldino. Oh no, I know was, what the show is next week. Okay. I was worried. I'm like, oh shit, are we not doing it? <laughs> yeah, you know that whole D and D thing that we were talking about. 
We're doing yeah, it. we do that here too. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've it's, done that. It's been a while, so. <laughs> yeah, Aetherite Radio First Edition, the game in which we play. Well, you play, I, I DM. Uh, characters on the first, right after a certain star shower. Uh, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of adventures, and some of wow. these uh, people are some of those new adventures. So, yeah. Next week will be. Man. I don't know. The last time we played must have been seven I, months I feel ago. like we were getting ready to like go out to collect yeah. something, but it was like mating season, so we're probably going to have to deal with animals yeah. like... Dragons! Yeah. Yeah, they were, were dragons! Were they dragons? Little dragons. Okay. Yeah, if if you have encyclopedic are any, knowledge of are like any of like those I do... dragons <laughs> druids, Rook wants to know for reasons. Oh, there might be. There might be. <laughs> but if you have encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge of, of Lakeland like I do for some stupid reason now, um, yeah, there's some gray Draco up north of Fort Yob Job, they I don't know, uh, <laughs> that are having some trouble with some gremlins, and uh, the party's going to try and fix that a little bit. Totally won't feed any of them after midnight. It'll be fine. Yeah, uh, true. Let's hope. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's next week. Uh, session eight of first edition. So uh, wow. we will see you next week for that. Uh, and until then, take care, everybody. Bye. Uh... <laughs> <laughs>